Welcome to this demonstration for configuring Oracle Database multi-stream protection jobs with Cohesity's Data Protect. In this demo, I'm going to highlight the simplification that Cohesity has introduced to the management of Oracle databases by leveraging their native integration with RMAN and simplifying the process for protecting and maintaining databases safe and secure within your infrastructures. So in this environment, we'll start by jumping into the Cohesity UI. Directly, we're able to see some of the most common things that are happening within the last 24 hours. But essentially, we're going to go through the process of configuring a remote adapter. Now, this infrastructure is connected to a virtual SAN converge infrastructure where I happen to be running a couple of Oracle databases, um, which I want to use for this particular exercise. Here, I'm going to particularly control or look at um, this one Oracle server, uh, which I'll be using in to protect one specific database from it. Uh, this Obviously, this infrastructure is running vSAN and SX, all micro-segmented, everything the way you would expect it to be in a virtual infrastructure today, uh, but it needs to be protected correctly. So we're going to add those final touches. So here we'll start by going over some of the requirements and some of the items that you'll need and you need to understand when configuring a remote adapter for Oracle and do some of the things we're trying to do here. So one of the very first things we have to do is create a view, which is a storage domain in which we can get to actually store the information or store the data that we're going to have. Traditionally, if you don't have one yet, you go through the process of creating a new, view, a new view. You'll see how simple this is. Provide a name, description, view box. Uh, you'll select a, a specific QoS policy in terms of uh, priority. And then you identify how you want to actually uh, utilize that sort of abstraction, whether it's going to be NFS only, if it's Linux, Unix, or it could be also SMB only if it's going to be running on a Windows space. Either way, we support multi multiple protocols. You can do that uh, any way you want to, or it fits your environment. So here we have obviously um, one of the, the views that are created, that I have already created. Another aspect of being able to access the view is providing accessibility from a secure standpoint. So we have the ability of providing um, a whitelist, whether it be global or specifically to that view, where you can actually define the, the either the subnet of the specific server or IP that can actually connect to this uh, storage abstraction or mount point that's going to be presented uh, from the Cohesity box to then be consumed in order to uh, store the actual data and the, the snapshots and the things that we'll, we'll be doing here in a, in, a, in a little bit. So as you can see here, some of the things that are very important is the fact that once you provide that NFS, uh, um, that storage abstraction, you, you're given an NFS mount point, an abstraction particularly here, to serve a Unix environment as the one I'm kind of using here. But particularly when I look at that specific um, uh, address, whether it be the host followed by the share name that actually has been given, and then we'll utilize that to configure the rest of the infrastructure. Now, there are some other components here that are very important as we plan to configure uh, this multi-stream configuration for ARMA backups. So basically here, take a look at the VIPs, the virtual IPs that we utilize for the individual nodes within a Cohesity cluster, which is what actually gives us the ability to provide high levels of resiliency and availability in the event of even failures when it comes to um, the infrastructure, something failing even within our secondary storage uh, infrastructure. This becomes very important because this is how we have to set up uh, the actual script and some of the things that we have to modify in the RMAN scripts that can actually be briefly modified but still utilize the same information. So now to create the actual job, notice that we go to create a, a job, a protection job, we choose a remote adapter. That remote adapter would allow us to then obviously in typical uh, cohesity fashion choose a policy which defines uh, the functions of the protection job, how often it's going to be backed up, and all those other things. And here's where things get a little bit interesting and quite simple. So here we have a couple of entry points uh, re ranging from a, a Linux IP address or host name, which in this case would be the actual Oracle server, and some of the things will be available. Here, as I said before, uh, when it comes to providing the address or fully qualified domain name, wherever it might be, I'm using a virtual machine running on vSAN here, and I'm just going to basically take the IP address provide the user that has the ability to perform the functions remotely that we're going to utilize here. In this, in this particular case, it's the Oracle user. And here's where things get a little bit interesting for those that are not very accustomed to this uh, type of thing. So we provide an SSH public key and the recommended way to connect and communicate with the Oracle server would be in this sort of secure way instead of using traditional passwords. So if you don't know how to add a public key to the uh, Linux box, there's obviously a link that provides the instructions on how to do that. I'm going to basically walk you 
through doing that process, but there's some other things that have to be done. For example, providing the right level of permissions in order for things to work correctly. So let me jump into the actual Linux uh, machine where the Oracle server is running. And let me show you and describe a couple of different items that are required here. So I'll start with these three screens. At the top right, you'll see um, a number of directories that are being created so that way they can be mounted to different paths of the cohesity cluster. Each one of these directories will map to, an in, to a different node, a different path. So obviously is how we're going to enable the sort of multi-stream configuration. So we created, I created four different folders, four different directories, which will then be mapped to four different paths, mapping to an individual node on the Cohesity cluster with a different virtual IP, which is why those virtual IPs were very, very interesting and very important. Now, obviously after that, uh, once those uh, directories are created and mapped uh, to the specific uh, paths and items within the actual Cohesity nodes or Cohesity cluster, we'll have to basically modify the FS tabs, as you can see here, and provide the mapping of the path to the actual mount point on the local server. Right? That's as much as we're going to need to do when it comes to uh, making sure that we provide access to the different nodes within the system so we can actually do the magic that we do with the multi-stream configuration. Now, when it comes to adding the public key, you'll have to obviously uh, go and find uh, within your uh, profile, there's a .ssh directory, which is hidden. In there, you'll find a, a directory which will host that particular access key. If the file is not existent, you'll basically have to create it, either VI or touch, any way you feel comfortable using one of those editors, and basically create the file. But once you create the file, basically paste the key that's provided by the cluster, by the view, so that you can actually have that level of secure communication. Once that's done, now the, the systems will be able to connect uh, safely. Now, the other piece to this is that I'm going to come back to the uh, window on the right and notice that I'm running in a particular uh, directory. This is where all the RMAN scripts are stored. This is one of the beautiful things that we can provide so that all of those DBAs that deal with um, a lot of the different back, uh, RMAN backup scripts that they're created, where they're stored, that doesn't have to change ever. We basically have to just uh, augment some of the uh, some of the scripts to make sure that they match in terms of the configuration uh, as it comes to dealing with pointing them to the different nodes to leverage and be able to uh, utilize the multi-stream capabilities. So we want to utilize this particular directory because it's one of the fields we have to enter in the job. But not only do we want to use the field itself, but then we also want to identify the actual script that we are going to be launching and running uh, for that particular job. Right in this particular case, I have. A number of scripts there so let's go be more specific on the script that i'm going to use in sense of uh, being multi stream and let me explain what's going on here so at the very top obviously for those of you that are very savvy with uh creating rman scripts and all that um it's all the same the only thing that you'll notice here is that for example uh we have i have listed the four different uh streams the four different mount points uh, which will map to the individual functions uh, the actual job itself within the script. Uh, obviously, um, those of you that are very uh, savvy with RMAN scripts, you'll see how uh, the towards the bottom, the RMAN script calls out different, uh, allocating different um, locations to actually perform and, and, and do the backup and do the things that it's going to do. But it's very quickly done, right? So after that, all we have to do is come back to the job itself, provide uh, the input in the fields. There's the script directory with the script that's going to be executed. And if there's any parameters, you would enter them there. So basically after that, you hit next uh, and you're almost there. Now you'll provide a particular job, hopefully something that it's meaningful and provide a good description so that you can actually track it. Here you pick the view box, actually where, you know, where most of the space efficiency features are applied and encryption, all those things. And then you'll choose the view, the storage domain, which will be utilized to store the data there. As you can see here, there's a warning stating that if you, you, know, you need to make some mappings and some adjustments so that this works as expected, making sure that the mount points is pointing to this particular case. There are some additional uh, uh, features and capabilities that you may have here, particularly when it comes to QoS. QoS in this term is just a, a form of adding priority to the job, how it's, uh, it's going to run and where it's going to be stored in terms of the media within the actual cluster itself, typically here on magnetic devices. Uh, here I'm looking at the actual job once it's completed, and one of the things that happens is uh, the job is not really automatically started. It's sort of put in a pause state. 
so that you can actually start it once things are ready. Maybe you want to do some checkups and things back on the server before you kick it off. So here I basically uh, resume the job and then run the job and you can see that it's running. Very quickly, I can go into the job and look at the actual progress of what's going on and you can very easily identify what's actually going on within the system as the actual script is being executed and performed. And very quickly, depending on how large the database is, obviously here it's not that big, but you can see that the job was uh, finished, completed successfully. And in typical fashion, this would happen because all the space efficiency things that Cohesity adds, and it does. And in this particular case, we're leveraging uh, you know, multi-stream, so it makes things a lot faster. You can come back and see and identify that the job has been completely and successfully done. And it is just that simple and easy to protect Oracle with Cohesity. All right, till next time, and thank you for watching.